So you want a BMW S1000 double R. You want to ride this luxurious Bavarian steed to the promised land. You want to rule over all leader bike squids from sea to shining sea, all while knowing wholeheartedly that you are better than every other person on the planet. I hear you. I see ya. After years of subjecting the Beamer to my critical analyses, even I have found myself in awe of its highly engineered acclaim. That's why we had to do it to them. We had to give the simps what they want. Not only are you seeing this video about everything on the s 1000 R, we're giving one away on yammynoob.co. This 2021 M and premium package with the carbon wheels, heated grips, cruise control, it's got everything going for it. It's brand spanking new. Seriously, that's like 600 miles on it. I broke it in myself. Self. Be sure to head over to yamanoo.co and grab some gear, become a member to secure your chances to win. Every dollar you spend will be a multiplier. Go and check out the website and see what that is right now. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. I will tell you more about them in just a bit. Without further ado, let's get into it. While BMW is no stranger to motorcycles, having produced heavy hitters in most categories for the better part of the 20th century, they were late to the realm of dedicated superbikes. They had made reputable sport tours like the BMW K series, as well as the cliched adventure category with the likes of the R1250 GS and its successors, but it wasn't until 2008 that BMW wanted a piece of the sport bike action. Arguably the worst timed superbike release because the market imploded and it was the financial crisis. Great. Coming to the segment about 30 years behind the big four Japanese brands, the Italian racing giants like Ducati and Aprilia, BMW had to come correct. They took their time, rigorously engineered and re-engineered a motorcycle that represented the upper echelons of superbike technology with the goal of achieving a coveted podium position in the World Superbike Championship. And they did just that. Except for the part about winning a World Superbike Championship. They haven't done that, but they have Toprak now, so maybe they will. We don't know. But in the pursuit of the seemingly unattained feat, they have managed to produce one of the most sought-after and practically fetishized leader bikes in the class. The s 1000 R originally debuted in 2008. The following year in 2009, 1,000 units were produced of the 999cc four-cylinder superbike to meet homologation requirements for the World Superbike Championship. In 2010, production was expanded as the s 1000 R became a flagship offering. The same year, this bike is its most significant racing success up to that point, with racer Eriton Badovini winning all but one race in the FIM Superstock 1000 Championship in World Superbike. This racing series is an important indication of the prowess of a given motorcycle, as the bikes that compete bear a much closer resemblance to the bikes you would find on the dealership showroom floor. For the first generation produced from 2009 until 2011, the S1000RR was making 190 horse horsepower and 83 foot-pounds of Torgorinamos. The BMW was quite cutting edge for the time, offering many electronic rider assist features. This included ABS and traction control, as well as three different ride modes including wet, sport, and race. There was also a fourth slick mode that was required to be unlocked by the dealer. This was similar to race mode, but squeezed every last ounce of juice out of the engine via the ECU. After the 2010 model year, the bike was also sold in an optional sport model, which included dynamic traction control and a quick shifter, making it the first production model to allow mortal riders the thrill of full throttle clutchless shifting. All right, folks, let me take one second to shout out the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. Ask any motorcyclist and they will tell you that riding a bike can do wonders for your mental health. But unfortunately, a little throttle therapy is just scratching the surface. Everybody faces challenges and stressors that can have lasting negative impacts on their mental health. And one of the best ways to navigate these moments is with the help of a licensed therapist. Starting therapy can be a nerve wracking experience, only adding an additional obstacle to an already challenging time. But it doesn't have to be. BetterHelp takes the guesswork out of finding the right therapist by matching you with one of 30,000 therapists in their network based on your personal needs. In most cases, you'll be matched with a therapist in as little as 48 hours and you can schedule a time to meet via the phone, video call, or even message chat. It's a new year and there's no better time to start taking steps to reach your goals towards self-improvement and BetterHelp can make it that much easier. Join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living happier, healthier lives. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash New. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gets you 10% off of your first month of BetterHelp so you can spend less time worrying and more time riding. Thanks so much BetterHelp for the support. 
Now let's get back to the show. The S1000RR was further tuned and refined in 2012 and in 2013. BMW released the S1000RR in an HP4 variant. This bike provided a similar experience to what we now recognize in the M1000RR, a production motorcycle that has modifications that make it more akin to the modified motorcycles used on the world stage. The HP4 pushed the envelope of what was expected in road-going motorcycles. It used a highly refined ride-by-wire system, a technology that was still quite cutting edge in 2013. The HP4 also featured a dynamic suspension dampening system that made minor adjustments to the suspension setting every 11 milliseconds using sensors and throttle input to provide the optimal handling experience. Matching the advanced suspension system, the HP4 also used upgraded Brembo monoblock calipers that even had a more advanced electronic system than the normal S1000RR, including a linked braking system that applied braking pressure to both wheels when the rider only modulates either the front or back brake levers. This system was designed to apply optimal stopping power and was active in every mode except for slick. This bike also had all the fancy farkles as well, like forged wheels, carbon fiber bodywork, and HP4 specific clutch and brake levers, and it's truly special. In 2015, the S1000RR saw significant updates that led to an overall increase in power and reduction in weight. This bike was now pushing 198 ponies while weighing 9 pounds less than the previous model. The engine was again refined with different cam profiles, lighter valves, and shorter velocity stacks from a larger airbox. To match these engine changes, the exhaust was also modified. This bike saw other upgrades that drew influence from the premium HP4 model, including new dynamic and race packages that included features like an up and down quick shifter and dynamic dampening control suspension. The electronics were refined to be even more advanced, adding to the bike's overall composed nature despite its monstrous power output. For this generation, the bike's style was also overhauled with new headlights, new colorways, and more aerodynamically advanced bodywork. The 2019 BMW s 1000 r underwent a comprehensive redesign, debuting at the November 2018 ICMA in Milan. The new 998cc four-cylinder engine boasted increased power, producing 204 horsepower at 13,500 RPM, thanks to BMW shift cam technology. The engine's weight was further reduced by almost 9 pounds, employing specialized components like titanium intake valves. The electronic suite included rider aids such as ABS Pro, Dynamic Traction Control, and Shift Assist Pro. The chassis was revamped for weight reduction and improved handling, featuring a redesigned aluminum perimeter frame and enhanced suspension components. The M package, a first for BMW motorcycles, which included a motorsport paint finish, M carbon fiber wheels, and an M lightweight battery, M chassis kit with a rear ride height adjustment and swing arm pivot, the M sport seat, and a pro riding mode. It kind of boggles the mind that BMW didn't just slap an M sticker on their bike and start selling it to simps back when they first launched it, because I feel like that would have made the most sense. The package reduced the weight further to 427 pounds, and in 2021, a fully race-bred M variant of the S1000RR was unveiled. As we stand now, the BMW S1000RR is making 205 horsepower, 83 foot-pounds of torque, and weighs 434 pounds in base trim. It's fully equipped with adjustable suspension, countless rider aids, and a quick shifter. In standard BMW fashion, this bike can be highly modified with factory options like pro ride modes, dynamic dampening suspension, and M package wheels, paint, and seat. In base trim, the S1000RR comes in at $25,980. If one were truly to ascend to God's status, they could also purchase the M1000RR. This variant is essentially the S1000RR fully loaded with all the M package farkles, carbon wheels, and aerodynamic winglets. For most people, the S1000RR with premium add-ons tailored to your style of riding and personal preferences would be the perfect motorcycle without paying more for the M denotation. The MSRP for M1000RR starts at $33,345 and inches much closer to 40 k rather Rather quickly with the BMW add-ons. And I don't know guys, 40k for a motorcycle? A little spicy for my blood. So we know how the S1000RR looks on paper, but what's it like to ride? What qualities does it possess that other bikes don't? What makes all the Beamer simps and old track day gurus cream in their track suits? What is arguably the S1000RR's greatest attribute is also its biggest downfall. It's just too perfect. It is of course fast, it's also highly refined and incredibly smooth. It's predictable in the right hands and can dominate a racetrack. Even for the average rider, its handling characteristics and multitude of tech features will make you feel like you just leveled up by swinging a leg over it. It's incredibly easy to ride, like turning the key is like you entered a leader bike cheat code. 
On the other side of that coin, this level of refinement can come across as clinical, sterile, and soulless, such that the bike operates as a purpose-built piece of industrial machinery and less like a motorcycle. For many, that doesn't constitute a drawback, but for others, the S1000RR just doesn't speak to their soul. But nobody can say that this motorcycle isn't exactly the bike that BMW wanted it to be. And think about it this way, when BMW first developed the S1000RR, they used the K5 Gixxer as a starting point. And we don't think of the K5 as very soulless, but BMW has really refined this package such that it now does feel a little clinical and soulless. But again, if you pride yourself on owning something that is just beautifully running and perfectly smooth, the S1000RR really gets the job done. It's a very nice package. It's impossible to talk about a European leader bike without mentioning the cost of ownership elephant in the room. A BMW will cost you more to own than any Japanese motorcycle. That shouldn't need to be said. Seriously, my first service on this bike was like $700. Ouch. The dealership network will be significantly smaller and a motorcycle of this nature cannot be neglected. It's also worth mentioning that BMW can be sticklers about service records when honoring warranty claims. For Japanese bikes, all you need is a receipt for the oil and filter and write it down in the owner's manual to prove your bike was serviced. Many BMW dealerships want all service done at the dealership to maintain the three-year factory warranty. Parts are most likely going to be expensive as well. But anyone with common sense should recognize this. BMW is considered to be a premium brand in all respects, so you gotta pay premium prices. Come on down to Eric's premium prices for all the fine European prices. We've got $35.50 for 40 bucks. That's if Eric Warheim worked at a BMW dealership. You better believe he's upselling you on that M package. As far as the BMW S1000RR's overall reliability, it's pretty tried and true at this point. The early models had some growing pains and recalls, as many bikes do upon immediate release. But since then, this bike has gone over with a fine tooth comb. All those early production gremlins have been vanquished in its 16 years of production. As for comparisons, I will not press anything too hard as most leader bike camps are pretty well established and divided. For Japanese leader bikes, the Yamaha R1 really is one of the best bang for buck motorcycles. With a base price of 18,400, you get super bike handling, tech, and a characterful cross plane four cylinder engine. If you're a flex offender who's wanting to spend BMW money on a Japanese bike, there's the R1M, which has the dynamic suspension and plenty of carbon fiber. A Ducati super bike is in many ways the antithesis to the S1000RR. They're similar and that they're built by European manufacturers and demand a premium price, but opposite in many other ways. The S1000RR is prim and proper, and the Ducati Panigale V4 is just kind of a nasty girl. It's got that brutal V4 engine with some serious bark that puts off so much heat to your thighs, you're going to feel like you're riding Dante's seventh layer burrito through hell. But it's a Ducati. It's hard not to love them. They sound great, and they're some of the most beautiful bikes ever made, and they win races. That's just a fact. Choosing a motorcycle is a really emotionally motivated decision. So we can crunch the numbers every which way, but you know what's right for you and what's wrong for you. There's no known cure for being a BMW simp, just as there is not one for being a Ducatista. Thanks for making it to the end of this one. Is the S1000RR truly as goaded as it's made out to be? Or is that part of the great BMW conspiracy to convince the entire world that with their bikes and those who ride them, they are better than everyone else? But regardless, you too can be part of the BMW hive mind by winning our giveaway S1000. R. Head over to Yamini.co and snag some gear, buy a membership to get access to our Discord and exclusive content, and rack up those entries. Thanks again to BetterHelp for the support on today's video. I will see you all in the next one. Fact. The Carbonari, meaning charcoal burners in Italian, originated as a revolutionary group opposing the Austrian occupation of Italy. They operated in secrecy with members known as charcoal burners. The society played a role in various uprisings and movements for Italian unification. The Carbonari used symbols and rituals to maintain secrecy and their influence extended across many different regions. Number one, carbonari sounds like carbonara and that's the only thing I can think of when I say that word. And number two, I feel like there's some sort of allegory between BMW and Ducati simps through this little fact. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Noob.